Hello and welcome to another battle report. Uh, this one features my Eldar army um, facing <coughs> a uh, corn themed army uh, including a bloodthirster and a brass scorpion. Uh, this is a tournament preparation game. Uh, the tournament is featuring a 1250 main list that can include a, a Lord of War from an approved list of Lords of War similar to the BAO list uh, and uh, two 750 sidebars uh, so you can set one up to presumably deal with the Lord of War and set another one up to deal with hordes or something else. Uh, that being said, my list is, uh, my main list of 1250 includes two Wave Serpents with five Dire Avengers in it, uh, a Wraith Knight with the uh, Shield Sun Cannon, uh, two units of seven spiders, uh, sorry, two units of six spiders, um, and an Autark. Uh, and two war walkers with bright lancers. Two units of two war walkers with bright lances. That's my main list. And then uh, the 750 list I'm going to put on the table to face this Lord of War uh, has two units of wraith guard in it, and a spirit seer, and another five man unit of war spiders. My opponent's list is pretty straightforward. The main 1250 is uh, a bloodthirster, uh, two units of 11 bloodletters uh, with champions in them. The Bloodthirster had, I think, two greater and a lesser gift, uh, something like that. Uh, the Brass Scorpion, of course. Uh, the Allied list is an Apostle with, uh, I think, eight or nine CSM. Uh, and a Land Raider, Mark of Corn, um, Icon of uh, Wrath, I think. And um, a Heldrake. That's his whole list. All right, so here we are after deployment. Um, my opponent uh, deployed first and is going to go first. Uh, he deployed everything in the middle. He puts three models on the table, all of which are very difficult to get first blood off of. I counter deployed by putting all of the stuff that could kill his uh, his big guy in one corner, and then a bunch of stuff that was fast and could uh, give him trouble if he turned away from it on the other flank. Uh, and then, luckily for me, I rolled to uh, steal the initiative on top of it. Night fighting was in effect, and uh, we were playing BAO Scenario 6, uh, Crusade. Um, I did get an extra Warlord trait, uh, it's a funny FAQ thing, and I did steal the initiative. So after stealing initiative, this is the end of turn 1. Uh, it was actually pretty uneventful, and I think the only real benefit of stealing the initiative is that my reserves will come in at the top of 2. Um, the FAQ thing is uh, where we're playing if you're facing a Lord of War, um, you get the plus one to steal initiative, but you also generate a free Warlord trait off of that table. Uh, the Warlord trait I generated was pretty much useless. Uh, it gave my Lord, my Warlord, and his unit rend, rending for like a turn, except my Warlord was my Autark, uh, so it's pretty useless. Um, the spiders that I left on the table got really poor jumps, and so I wasn't able to get in range to, to even touch the Bloodthirster. Um, I ended up taking one wound off of him with all of my shooting. Alright, this is the bottom of uh, game turn one. Um, that uh, cannon on the Brass Scorpion is no joke. Uh, strength 10, AP 2, um, Ordnance, ignores cover. Um, so he, he put down a Wave Serpent, uh, didn't blow it up though. Uh, got first blood off of that. And otherwise didn't, didn't do too much. Um, still had his... Uh, Scorpion position where he could go either to the left or the right, um, but uh, he definitely committed his demon to uh, my side of the board, the heavy side of the board in terms of the Wraith Guard and the Wraith Knight being there. The Warp Storm table is a, a fickle master. Um, perhaps one of the best results I could possibly get as an opponent. Uh, his invulnerable saves were reduced by one for the, the turn. Um, Everything but a unit of war walkers came in in terms of reserves. I didn't have many reserves uh, anyway. I got a tremendous jump with the spiders, 18 inches. Uh, I lost one in the meantime, but I was able to get into some side armor there. The other spiders got a terrible jump, and so they just held tight where they were. And I was able to push a wave serpent. It had jinked um, before, and I might have been able to get away with not jinking it since there was a last cannon snap firing at it. Um, but uh, I got lots of stuff in the side armor, and the five spiders that dropped down into rear armor, I think they did like four hull points to it. Uh, it was tremendous, uh, tremendous good luck. So at the end of uh, turn two, uh, the top of turn two, the scorpion has two hull points left. 
This is the bottom of game turn two. Uh, it's important to keep track of the points for the secondary for, for this report as well because it uh, helps play out, uh, helps explain the, how the game plays out. At the uh, end of game turn two, my opponent is winning the secondary uh, four points to two points. Um, I wasn't able to get anything, score anything on uh, turn one. Now, as far as uh, his turn two goes, uh, he has 11 blood letters deep strike in onto an objective that uh, he needed to hold. Um, the bloodthirster uh, goes over and takes care of the warp spiders. The fickle warp storm table uh, glances out one of my uh, war walkers with the scene sh strength, s strength four, AP three, or whatever it is. Random number of hits. Uh, defensively, this wasn't too bad of a turn. I lost uh, two units of warp spiders, one to the bloodthirster, one to the brass scorpion. Uh, they're on the top of the hill, but the CSM that disembarked to assault the wave serpent on the right hand side failed a seven inch charge. So this is the end of the top of uh, turn three. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, the Bloodthirster in turn one uh, regenerated uh, one of its wounds uh, with It Will Not Die. I believe that was its Warlord trait, and the Brass Scorpion comes with It Will Not Die, and it regenerated one of its hull points. So it's sitting there with three hull points uh, right now. As you can see, at the end of uh, turn three, it's still alive. Um, I got a poor jump with the Warp Spiders, and I believe I lost another one to uh, a Doubles. I disembarked the Dire Avengers and uh, took some pot shots at the CSM. Uh, I managed to kill like three or four actually, but not the Apostle. I think I put a wound on him. And uh, I pulled the Wave Serpent back so it would be a little bit harder to uh, assault with the CSM. And if they wanted to, they'd have to commit themselves to being pretty far out in the open. Uh, otherwise, I didn't do a single wound to his uh, Bloodthirster and uh, put all my shots into the Brass Scorpion that I could and really didn't do very well at all. I should also point out that I failed to get the other unit of Warwalkers in, um, despite the Autark uh, allowing me to modify the, the reserve roll, and I failed, I think, a 7-inch charge with my Wraith Knight against the Blood Letters. Alright, here we are at the bottom of game turn 3, um, at which point in time my opponent is beating me 6-3 to three on the secondary. The Brass Scorpion made a, a phenomenal charge to pick up a, a single Dire Avenger uh, that refused to die. His Hell Turkey came on, uh, Vector struck my War Walker, but uh, actually didn't do anything to it, so he had to shoot it with his Land Raider. His Bloodthirster uh, assaulted my Wave Serpent, and his uh, Blood Letters assaulted my other Wave Serpent, which uh, put my Wraith Guard on the board, uh, which meant that by the time the Scorpion got to them, they would easily be killed. So this is the end of the top of turn four. Uh, War Walkers come in automatically. Um, I'm not sure I'm happy with the side of the board they came in on, but uh, I think they'd probably last an extra turn or two uh, compared to coming in on the other side of the board. My War Spiders rallied. One of them with a three inch move was able to get line of sight on the Scorpion. Snap firing didn't do anything. And I started to move those Dire Avengers uh, away since there was nothing for them to do except die by being roasted or shot or something like that. Um, I put the Bright Lances into the Hell Turkey and uh, missed with everything, of course, snap firing. In close combat, Actually, I'm just getting ahead of myself. The uh, two units of Wraith Guard between them managed to uh, uh, distort the demon. Uh, he failed his invulnerables and was removed from the board, which was good. But uh, my <laughs> Wraith Lord uh, got into combat with the Blood Letters, and that's fine. And they can't hurt him unless they're charging, which is great. And they won't break from comment with combat, which is also fine. Uh, but he, uh, he failed to kill all of them, and he was actually locked in with the champion. That probably turns out to be a good thing uh, since he's not a legitimate uh, shooting target uh, in the next turn. So not not a bad result actually. This is the, uh, the end of game turn four uh, at which time as far as the secondary goes my opponent is beating me seven to four. Um, it is unless the game goes seven turns and he stops earning points towards the secondary it's going to be very difficult for me to come back at all. Uh, he has his blood letters come in automatically. Uh, my warlord trade was minus one to his reserve rolls, um, which may or may not have been useful. I, I was happy that they came in piecemeal, uh, made them slightly easier to deal with. This side of the board uh, has completely collapsed. Everything is gone. 
the only good news is that the uh, Brass Scorpion has not regenerated a hull point uh, in these past couple of turns, despite my not being able to put any more attacks on it. Alright, this is um, either sometime during uh, the bottom of turn 5 or the actual bottom of turn 5. Um, we stopped keeping track of the secondary after this because the score was 9 to 5, uh, so it was impossible for me to take that. Um, he had definitely won the secondary. Um, I'd made it into close combat with the blood letters, um, and this time again the champion uh, stymied me, well, saved me for one, and then stymied me the next one because uh, he made his invulnerable against my only wound. Um, the Land Raider I had dinged a hull point off of with a Bright Lance but otherwise hadn't really touched and the Scorpion um, he had a difficult decision to make and that was uh, whether to charge or whether to just uh, walk over some more and shoot up the rest of my guys. Alright, this is the end of uh, game turn six. Um, you can see I don't have much Wraith Guard left, uh, many Wraith Guard left, and, but I am actually poised to potentially, uh, well, it's, it's, not, it's not true, I mean, I'm losing the game right now because he's holding two objectives. The Hell Turkey went into hover mode and he's holding one, the Land Raider's holding another, so as far as Crusade goes, we're tied, and since he's taking the secondary and he has uh, First Blood and I think also Line Breaker, um, or maybe not Line Breaker yet, um, but he has first blood, so he would definitely win the game uh, if it ended at the at the bottom of turn six. Uh, he did decide to charge the scorpion in. I directed all of my attacks against the scorpion and got perhaps as lucky as I've ever gotten in my life. Um, I put uh, two hull points on it, uh, so I took it within one hull point of being destroyed. And then in response, uh, it did not hit me with a single one of its strength 10 AP2 attacks. Uh, that's seven dice. He rolled seven, ones, twos, and threes. Uh, and then for his stomp, uh, which of course you know, he got D3 plus two stomps, I think it was, um, he didn't roll a single six uh, to six me out uh, with the D. So I survived, uh, and then because of the fact that I put hull points on him, I, uh, his Bloodletter champion died due to instability. Um, a really pretty remarkable result. And then uh, the bonus was that the game was going to go on to a turn seven and get very interesting. All right, this is the end of game turn seven and the end of the game. Uh, you can see the, the turkey came off the objective. I separated out my uh, Autark from the Wraith Guard, uh, so they're two separate units still holding that same objective. Uh, the Hell Turkey had jinked the turn before due to Wraith Guard fire, and so he couldn't template, so all I could do was Vector Strike. And so I was hoping that uh, he wouldn't be able to clear everything off. And I had my Spirit Seer hiding around the corner, bravely holding that objective and uh, staying out of line of sight for uh, last cannons or other shooting. Um, so, I, as you can see, the Autark survived the uh, um, Vector Strike. Uh, he failed the wound. I didn't even have to make a save. And that is uh, what actually made the game end up in a straight draw. Um, because he left that objective, I won the primary. Um, I lost the secondary, and uh, he ended up with uh, First Blood and Line Breaker, and I had Slay the Warlord. So uh, it's five to five, uh, an absolute straight up tie. A remarkable turn of events. I, I got to hit first, so actually the uh, Brass Scorpion was dead um, after the top of turn five. My consolidation move was only two inches, so I didn't go anywhere. It wasn't going to help me since the end of the game was imminent. In the uh, uh, explosion that follows, uh, I took a wound. Uh, it wasn't D-strength though, so that is the only wound that my Wraith Knight took uh, during the entire game, uh, which was incredibly fun, uh, super tense, nerve-wracking, nail-biting, all of those things, and uh, a clear example of uh, why you play the game and why you roll the dice. Uh, overall, it was a fantastic experience, and I really appreciate the opportunity to face the Lord of War. Um, one note, the, uh, the FAQ that we're playing under currently does not give victory points for hull points, taking hull points off the Lords of War. If it did, um, then I would have actually won the game 8-5 to five for taking those 9 hull points off of the Brass Scorpion. Uh, that's, you know, neither here nor there. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.